Hi, I'm here at uh, EGX 2016. Um, I'm here with Chris, and we've just had a chance to have a quick go um, on a demo of the Little Acre. Um, do you want to give us a quick idea of, of where the story goes, what the kind of overarching themes are, and things yep. like that? Yeah. Um, okay, so for, in terms of the story from the very start, um, it starts with Lily uh, and her father Aidan, who live in like 1950s Ireland in, in this cottage in rural you know, countryside. Um, and, and the story begins with Aidan looking for his own father who's gone missing for a while. Um, his father turns out to be this like wacky inventor type, so he discovers one of his machines that then accidentally transports him to like a fantasy universe. Uh, and that's, that's sort of where the adventure then takes off, you know, so Aidan and, and then later Lily, they both travel there and they encounter all sorts of like weird and wonderful things. Uh, and then it's just about how we kind of transition the story back between the real world and there, and we change up the art style then as well. Um, you know, between as as the story kind of weaves its way in between the two worlds. Yeah, what was the, what was the inspiration between um, behind making that move to the different art to the different yeah. art style and the isometric view for, it, for the? For I, the I think it just began with us just kind of experimenting with with putting the two perspectives together and going, oh, this is an interesting thing that you don't really see. Um, but you know, once we tried it out, we we, we realized, oh, it actually like helps, um, you know, really distinguish between this is a fantasy world and this is a real world so everything kind of starts normal and then suddenly something weird happens but also something uh, weird really happens in the game like not just the story but you know the, the visuals all change and the characters they physically shrink down and change in size and they, they look all different so it just helps pop and you know it helps it pop and it, it's, it's always really surprising I think for the players who aren't expecting yeah. it. Is that something that was really interesting for yourself and the team to kind of it's built on so much you're saying about Broken Age. It's kind of this this beautiful classic animation style yeah. and this this point and click heritage to then kind of bring in new elements to it and, and look at a different yeah, way yeah. to do a, a very classical genre. Exactly. Yeah. That's uh, that's kind of one of the things that we've been doing a lot with this is just you know not trying to make it like it's a classic adventure, but we want to just experiment with a few different things. You know, like the art style is something that's not done a lot anymore. Um, even even just the, the, the kind of the, the game design philosophy of, of us wanting to make sure that it's a game to be finished and making sure that the puzzles aren't too like aren't overly obtuse and illogical and uh, you know just kind of stepping away from the things that that you would encounter in, in a lot of adventure games that that would just make them frustrating or whatever and just saying hey look here's a game it's just gonna be fun play from start to finish no bother that's it you know and we've touched on the art style briefly there um, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, Thank you. It look it looks like if you chopped it all together and just made it into a movie, it would not be completely out of place yeah, on the yeah, screen yeah, at all. Is that really like a massive? You saying that a lot, the vast majority of the team is mm. the, is an art team, and, yeah. and so much of what you're doing at kind of the the rear end of the development is looking at the the art style and little extra yeah. things you can add. Is that really a labor of love for you guys to, yeah, to make definitely. it look beautiful? Yeah. I mean, it had to be like we, as you said, we spent most of our time on on the art side of the game. Like that was the slowest aspect of the development of the Lakers because you know it's it's hand drawn animation. It's a traditional style where you're drawing every frame one at a time. So to do the smallest thing can take like a day or two. Um, but but yeah, we we had. You know, Ben and I, we started the company and we, we took care of like game design and all that sort of stuff, but we had like seven animators working on it in total, you know, all, all with their own contributions. And I can point to every bit in the game and go, oh, that bit was drawn by that person, yeah. that bit was drawn by that person. So it's cool that everybody had, had some sort of like significant contribution in that way, um, but just also at a necessity. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely one of the things that people notice as well when they first see the game, they're like, look at that art style. and. You know, that was no accident. We're like, yeah. let's let's get something that people will really, you know, that'll really grab people's attention. And I think we've done it. And when can <laughs> we uh, get a chance to get our hands on it? Then when can we look forward to playing it? Um, we're hoping to release uh, soon, very soon. Yeah. Um, we're looking at like end of October-ish, but we're, we have yet to pick an exact date. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Keep well, an eye. Yeah. Keep an eye. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward to having a go anyway. So. Yeah. Thanks so, very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. All right. Thanks. I'm here at EGX 2016. I've just had a got to have a. We're here at EGX 2016. Oh. <laughs> it's the name of the game that we're about to do, I think. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm flagging now. <laughs> so I'm here at EGX 2016. That sounded really weird, I'm excited. What's your name again, Mitch? Uh, Mitch. Mitch. Oh, good. I would have said Mark and that would have been wrong. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs>